Richard Garriott has had quite a bit of success making games. He's also made a bit of a name for himself building some crazy houses. Houses with moats and secret passages and underground complexes. He's built his fourth here in New York City and we've come by to check it out. I started transitioning, uh, you know, a life up here in New York uh, about two years ago, but it's only been a couple months ago that we finished this house and began to move in. This is a five-story brownstone. Five stories, wow. Uh, yeah, it's only 16 feet wide. <laughs> yeah, that's... But then it goes up. You know, what you went here in Manhattan, that's sort of the, yeah. the, the way things go. This cabinet right here is actually one of my favorite creations of this new house because of how powerfully I believe it makes the history of the universe self-evident. Starting from the plasma that right after the Big Bang as matter began to solidify into plasma and all the way down through human descendants and mummies and the Great Wall of China and African tribes and things that lead us over to space travel. All these fossils and everything in here are all real. Uh, even things like these uh, mummies parts are real. That's a real, that's not a cast, that's actual. That's the real, that's the real deal. Uh, this is some of the very first ever writing. Uh, this is oh, a wow. cuneiform tablet yeah, that is yeah. associated with the sale of a piece of real estate. I think of the way I love to go explore, the things I love to collect, and the things I create, whether they're the physical home or virtual worlds, are very deeply interrelated. This is the English basement, and we lowered the floor in here by an extra foot so we could get the eight-foot ceilings. Oh, wow, okay. What these are, these are all automatons. Right. And between the part that I have here, the half that I have here, and the half that are in Texas, I believe this is the largest collection of automatons uh, in the world, I think. Uh, here's a fun one too, although it's a little dark here right now. This is a pepper grinder. And so it, it starts with, you know, pepper right. up here in the top receptacle. You know, as you turn this crank, first of all, the mortar comes down here, but you'll also notice right here, there's a handful of pepper that has started to move up. A and single, a single, oh there's no, there's about like five, four, four five, five kernels. Yeah. And now most of it was shot up through there, and a few of them, there's four of them <laughs> that ended up in here. Now it's getting good and ground. And now, assuming your salad plate was right here. <laughs> and there you go, there's a little bit of... Nice. To me, is a manifestation of the same desire to make games. The, the houses are playful game environments. The exploration that I do is that same expression of j the joy of discovery and creation uh, that manifests in the houses too. So this is a small bowl here, I think from Target or something based on the sticker underneath it. So now you need to look here at the very surface of it. We're gonna get it to react. Holy crap. What and if that, that wasn't enough, we're gonna bring a little more around the sides. It is electromagnetism. When we first were looking at this house, when it was derelict, we noticed that door that goes out to the street, and that door, you know, there's, there's the front stoop, so it, it couldn't really go anywhere, right. if you know what I mean. Right, right. And it was only the second time here they went, wait a minute, where in the world could you go if you go this way because there's a stoop right behind it? This is a sidewalk vault. We're standing underneath the sidewalk right now? Right now you're under the sidewalk. Does it look like the it, street. This I was about to the, say, the, it goes into the street. This is, this, you, when we go outside, we'll see this. This is actually on the sidewalk also. Oh, so the, the, okay. curb, this is, the curb is really right above this wall. So we're, we're completely under the sidewalk. Do you have that locked in some way so small children can't rob you of your liquor? No, but the small children would have to be like nine inches in diameter. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it would be, it'd be tricky. <laughs> hey Eric, how are you? <laughs> One of the very first ever telepresent robots we used at our wedding in France so that my mother could be there with us from her computer in Austin, Texas. Kind of like a Skype terminal on top of a Segway. I mean, they're more sophisticated than that in general. Oh, and without bumping the wall. You drug? A little bit, <laughs> only a little. <laughs> Bring up some art on your screen, Scotty, and I'm gonna show how this works in a second here. Yeah, we've seen, that's not bad. You know, for a long distance view, we can at least, yeah. we can even review art with some basic intent. Okay, perfect, thank you. We're just doing the tour here for the Polygon folks in case you're wondering why I'm scooching by your office. Okay, <laughs> see you guys. Bye-bye from New York. This is an interesting object. And as you know, Sputnik was the first thing ever sent into space. Right. On the 40th anniversary, Sergei Sambarov built four Sputnik 2s, two of which never flew, one of which he has on his desk in Russia, and the other one is right here. 
And so if I turn this on by reaching inside this, it is now <laughs> actually transmitting and to this ham radio. So what it, where is that coming from? That, this, so that's a pre-recorded message? It's in this device, yeah. And now you can hear it in English and French. So the stuff you're going to see up here is just uh, you know, space artifacts, uh, some that I just think are cool, things like you know, my launch on spacecraft. These flags are some things I flew in space. Uh, but if you look up on our way up, you're going to see one of the original Sputniks. There's actually a real Sputnik 1 oh, wow. hanging in the, in the skylight. And, uh, and here's Kinga's display of the tin toy automatons, you know, including you know, some that draw pictures and you know, things of that nature. Here's one that's drawing a picture of the Queen of England. Is it really done? Yeah, yes, it's yes, really drawing. But this is also a secret passageway into Kinga's room. And so, yeah, there you can get the more full size there of, of Kinga's space. In a gaming sense, you have found a lot, built this beautiful house, and filled it with loot. <laughs> like, that's yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. It's just like you would in a game. It's funny you mention that because home decorating is such an important part of a virtual existence, is to be able to keep the markers of your life. You know, for, for me, everything in this house and in any of our houses, it doesn't matter what the dollar value of any of this stuff is, it's, it meant something to you. And it's the ability to keep and showcase those things and therefore give players the ability to talk about them or reminisce about them, uh, I think is every bit as powerful as it is in, in the real world.